My name is Ashley Lohr, and I am the host of the Lansing Symphony's LSO Kids program. As an LSO kid, you have the chance to hear from a Lansing Symphony musician and their instrument. You'll hear a wonderfully read story by a local music teacher in the Lansing area, and I have a special fun craft for us to work on from home. Today, we get to meet Catherine, and she has about six or seven different instruments to share with us. Hi, Catherine, how are you? Hi, Ashley, I'm great, how are you? Oh, good, thank you. I'm so excited to see all of those instruments on your table and in your hand. What instrument family are all of these from and what is in your hand? Well, this instrument is called a lute. And uh, all these other instruments are either types of flutes or related to the flute. I have here a regular C flute. Uh, I have here a smaller instrument called a piccolo. A larger flute called an alto flute. Then we have oh, the grandfather of the flute, the Baroque flute and possibly the great-grandfather. Some of you might be more familiar with this instrument, the recorder. Although in this case, it's the alto recorder, a little bit bigger. And also got here penny whistle, smaller, and a ditsi, Chinese flute. And last of all, an Indonesian flute called suling. So, flute has been around a long time in many different places. What are these things made out of? It looks like some are made out of metal, but I'm not sure about everything. What, how, what are these made out of? Lots of different materials. So this flute has um, gold, silver, uh, copper, all different kinds of metals. Same with my alto flute. This piccolo, however, uh, is made of grenadilla wood with silver keys um, and this older style flute is also made of the same dark colored wood so traditionally flutes and recorders were made of wood uh, this recorder is plastic however i do have a plastic piccolo so it's all types i think some of the earliest flutes were made out of animal bones so uh I had friends who made Flutes from PVC pipes, um, really any kind of a tube that you can uh, cut holes into, and a blowing hole could be considered a flute if you're holding it sideways. That's amazing. Um, so how do you make sound on all of these different instruments? I blow air from my lips into the hole at the top of the tube here. Um, and since I'm holding the flute sideways, rather than the recorder for all the air, goes into the top of the instrument. I end up blowing the air across the hole so that it hits the metal on the far end of this hole. It's called the riser, and that resonance creates the sound. What are some of the higher or lower sounds that you can play on your flute? Well, the flute plays almost as low as the violin, really beautiful mellow sound. So I'm wondering, could you maybe play something fast for us so we can watch how quickly your fingers move on the flute? Well, I will play a little bit of what you heard last week from Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream Overture. And this is the flute solo at the end of the movement. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, so do you think that you could maybe play something a little bit slow for us? We have a beautiful slow etude that is a study, um, almost like homework for the flute, but it also happens to be a really beautiful melody. So this is by the French composer Jacques Castoret. <laughs> That was so pretty. Wow. I'm wondering if you can play something loud for us now. I've heard a lot of different volumes. I have uh, the first tango A2 for solo flute, uh, also written for solo violin by the Argentinian composer Astor Piazzolla. And I love this uh, particular movement because uh, he wants big, loud, accented, fiery notes, both in the low register of the instrument, the low notes and the high notes. And on the flute, the low notes tend to be softer, the high notes will sing out. So uh, a lot of our practice is in being able to play low and high, loud and soft. So this is all about bringing up the loud passion. <laughs> the softer the quieter sounds too do you think you have something that you could play that would feature that sure and actually I might do something that's even more unusual on the piccolo because the piccolo in particular is wonderful about uh being that icing or sprinkles on top of the cake or the cupcake of the orchestra just adds that sparkle and shine but it can also be a very beautifully delicate instrument so I'm going to play a little bit from the piece uh, for orchestra by Maurice Ravel uh, called Mother Goose Suite. Um, to make it even sound a little bit bird-like, we have some flutter tonguing at the very beginning where I'm <laughs> with my tongue. I've heard of the piccolo before, but I've never heard it like that. That was beautiful. So I'm wondering, how old were you when you started playing? I was nine years old. 
I started in fifth grade band. And what made you decide to play the flute? Well, I, I laugh about this now. I've seen so, uh, s such a silly reason, but it was start school in August in Louisiana, where I grew up, way down south, very, very hot in August. Walked into the band room, I tried a clarinet and all that warm vibration of wood and the reed, just too hot, but the cool metal of the flute and the simplicity of, of blowing into the flute without the reed, it just felt much more comfortable. So something about the temperature, uh, but also the, the simplicity, not having a reed, unlike all of the other woodwind instruments, which typically are made of wood and have a, a small reed attached to the mouthpiece that vibrates. That's such a great story. Uh, so since then, do you, do you tend to spend a lot of time practicing? Yes, uh, especially for orchestra. I practice a lot to prepare, not just for the concert, but for the very first rehearsal. That's great. Um, so what then is your favorite part about playing in an orchestra? Uh, one of my favorite things about playing in an orchestra is that I get to wear so many hats or play so many different roles where sometimes I'm soloist, sometimes I'm the accompanist, sometimes uh, playing more as a chamber musician uh, in concert with other people. So, and even in one piece or one movement, that role can change. Um, so that really keeps me on my toes and there, I think there can be a healthy balance of different ways that uh, of communicating with the other musicians by instrument. I noticed that you have a ton of different instruments on that table and you showed them to us earlier. Um, could you play something on maybe a couple other of, uh, instruments? Sure. Uh, here is the Baroque flute, the predecessor to the flute that I normally play. Um, That had such a lovely warm sound. That's beautiful. Uh, the recorder is also a pretty warm and mellow sound and uh, a bit lower than its alto just loved hearing about your different flutes and the piccolo and all, and the recorder all of these different instruments I'm wondering is there one last piece you would like to play for us today sure uh, yes the alto flute also has a lower warmer sound it's very mellow and broad um, and I think it works particularly beautifully in jazz style music, for example. <laughs> for sharing your talents with us today. We learned so much. Well, thank you, Ashley. I'm glad to share this with you. Wow, Catherine, that was awesome. I loved learning about all the different types of flutes, the piccolo, the recorder. In fact, you've really inspired me to go and practice my recorder a bit more. 
Up next, I have a celebrity music teacher from Mason Schools and her name is Mrs. Haynes. She has a really fun kind of jazzy book for us to read today called Doobie Doobie Moo. Hello, my name is Ms. Haynes and I'm going to be reading a book today called Doobie Doobie Moo and it's written by the authors who wrote Click Clack Moo Cows the Type, Doreen Cronin and Betsy Lubin. Farmer Brown keeps a very close eye on his animals. Every night he listens outside the barn door. Dooby, 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 moo, the cows snore. Fa, la, 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 ba, the sheep snore. Quack, 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 duck snores. Duck keeps a very close eye on Farmer Brown. Every morning, Duck borrows his newspaper. One day, an ad catches his eye. It says, talent show, open to all. Where? The county fair. When? Saturday. First prize, a trampoline. Second prize, a box of chalk. Third prize, a veggie chop -o -matic. As soon as Farmer Brown opened his paper, he knew the animals were up to something. Farmer Brown watched them closely all day. He watched them from above. He watched them from below. He even watched them upside down. Outside the barn, late at night, he heard, Dooby, 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 moo. Fa la 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 la, quack, 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 quack. Inside the barn, the cows rehearsed Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Dooby, 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 moo. Dooby, moo, 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 moo needs work, Duck noted. The sheep rehearsed home on the range. Ba, 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 la, ba, ba, la, ba, 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 ba. Duck had them try it again with more feeling. The pigs did an interpretive dance. Quack. Quack, quack, snored duck. Day after day, Farmer Brown kept a very close eye on the animals. He watched them from the left. He watched them from the right. He even watched them in disguise. Outside the barn, night after night, he heard, Dooby, 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 moo, ba, la, 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 ba, quack, 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 quack. Inside the barn, night after night, the animals rehearsed. Finally, it was time for the county fair. Duck was pacing back and forth. The pigs were combing their hair. The cows were drinking tea with lemon. They are up to something, thought Farmer Brown. Farmer Brown was not going to leave them alone. He loaded all the animals into the back of his truck and he drove to the fair. When he got there, he heard, Dooby, 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 moo, ba, la, 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 quack, 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 quack. He parked his truck and headed off to the free barbecue.
When Farmer Brown was out of sight, the animals ran to the talent show desk and signed in. Cows, sheep, pigs. The cow sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Dooby 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 moo. Dooby moo 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 moo. Two of the judges were clearly impressed. They got an eight, an 8.2, a two, and a 1.2. The sheep sang Home on the Range. Ba la 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 ba, ba la ba 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 ba. They got a nine, a nine point one, an eight point nine, and a two point three. Three of the judges were clearly impressed. It was time for the pigs' interpretive dance, but they were sound asleep. All of the judges were clearly annoyed. Duck really wanted that trampoline. He jumped on the stage and sang, Born to be Wild. Quack, 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 quack. The judges gave him a standing ovation. When Farmer Brown got back to the truck, he heard, Dooby, 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 moo, ba, la, 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 ba, quack, 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 quack. The animals were exactly where he had left them. That night, Farmer Brown listened outside the barn door. Dooby, dooby, boing. Ba, la, 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 boing. Quack, 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 boing. They got their trampoline. I hope you enjoyed that book. It's one of my favorites to read with my students. Have a wonderful day. What a fun story. I've never read Doobie Doobie Moo like that before, but I definitely will be from here on out. I think my favorite part of all of it was probably the singing sheep. I liked their song the best. I'll bet the kids at Mason schools absolutely love that Mrs. Haynes. Thank you again for sharing. All of this talk about the Woodwind family and flutes had me thinking about how can I make one at home? And I did a little bit of research and I found a special type of flute called the pan flute or the pan pipes. And so for today's make it at home activity, I'm going to show you how to make the pan pipes. All you need are some straws, a little bit of adhesive like glue or tape, some scissors, a marker, if you want a marker, you don't really need a marker. And I also found some popsicle sticks to use because it's a woodwind instrument. It's good to have a little bit of wood on it. For today, we're going to make what are called pan pipes or sometimes called the pan flute. Um, since we've been talking so much about the flute today, I figured this would be a great thing for us to work on. So you're going to want some straws. You'll want some tape or glue or some sort of adhesive. And if you have a popsicle stick or two, that would be great. If you don't, you can also just use an extra straw or two if you need one. So what you'll want to do is start off by arranging your straws so that they are all together and they're all at the same length. And I'm going to make mine look a little bit like a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, white, red, orange, yellow, green, white, and so on and so forth. 
And it's really important that they are pretty close to being the same length because if they're the same length, that way um, when you go to blow air through them, it will be easier to make a sound. Next, I'm gonna take my tape and I'm going to add it to my straws on one side as well as the other. And I just tape these to the counter, which is actually okay. because so I can just lift them off and flip them over and do the same thing. So I have my straws all nice together in a row. I wanna make sure that I don't tape them so tight that the straw ends up pinching together because that's going to affect the sound. All right, now I'm going to um, add them to my popsicle stick. So again, all I need to do is set them on that stick, take another piece of tape, and drop them on like so. Now, if I were to blow air into all of these right now, they would all make the same sound because they're all the same length. So instead, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to cut them so that way each pipe or each straw is a different length. And that's going to make them have different pitches when I play. Um, so I could take another straw and I could very easily draw a line across my pan pipes. And the flatter the line, the less difference you'll hear in sound. The more angled the line, angled is a fancy term for making it look more slashy, the different, the, the greater the difference in pitches. So I'm gonna just do this and do that across. So now I have a line to go by and I'm going to cut. I just grabbed my scissors, so I'm going to very carefully cut along the line. Ooh. And then they have a kind of a cool angled shape to them, and I have a lot of extra little straw pieces that I can just kind of get rid of at this point in time. Now, if I blow into the instrument, you're going to hear on this end, I'm going to start on this end, you're going to hear a lower sound because the tube is longer. And then on this end, you're going to hear a higher sound because that tube is shorter. So that's a quick and easy way to make some pan pipes. There are a couple others that I made that I'm going to show you next. I wanted to show you really quick a couple other pan pipes that I made myself. And I made them based on what we just did together. Um, this first set, I added more straws and I actually added two popsicle sticks and just taped it off at the ends. Remember, the longer side is going to have a lower pitch. When you go to play on your pan pipes, make sure that you're not just blowing directly into the straw, kind of like how you blow bubbles through a straw. Instead, you're going to blow air a, a little bit down, but also a little bit across the straw. So listen to the difference. That doesn't really do much for sound, but if I do this, that gives me a very different sound. Now listen to what happens when I blow across and all the way up. Listen to how the pitch changes. Ooh, I'm gonna go the opposite direction now. So there's so much you can do with pan pipes. I did make another one because you know I am a music teacher and with my students we do practice working on our solfege, you know, our do's, our re's, our knees, that sort of thing. And so I made one that kind of sounds a little bit like the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So um, with this one, I only used eight straws. I didn't need much more than that. And I also spaced them out so that I could play individual notes or individual pitches just a little bit better. So if you listen, I'll go through and I will play um, just a normal scale. Listen closely. Really have to work more on that, those higher ends. All right, and I'm gonna go the opposite direction. could also play a couple songs on this. Hmm. I 
I'm wondering if I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We just heard that in Dooby Dooby Moon. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> so this is another option. If you want to kind of challenge yourself, you can try to make different pitches and go from there. So if you have a recorder or a piano, or maybe you even have a xylophone at home, you can try to make the straws kind of match the pitches that you find on those instruments. You know, guys, we learned so much today. Thank you so much to Catherine for sharing your flutes and your piccolo and your recorder. I'd never heard some of those instruments before and it just totally blew my mind the different sounds that you could make on them. Um, I really also liked that Baroque flute. I thought that was just a beautiful mellow sound. I also wanna thank Mrs. Haynes from Mason Schools for reading Doobie Doobie Moo. I can't wait to read that one on my own again with the different songs in it. That was just so much fun. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors for helping make sure that we can be LSO kids. So thank you to Jackson National Life, Comerica, MSU, FCU, and the Ari Olds Foundation. I can't wait to see you again and learn more about the symphony. See you soon, LSO kids. Thank you.